in Chapter 1, Section 1, the default configuration, we'll define our views such as our anatomical markers for right and left, anterior posterior, identifying patient information and capture date, exposure settings, anatomical orientation as it relates to our view, as well as anatomical orientation options in our 3D window. What's important to understand as it relates to 3D viewing software are the three basic planes, including coronal, which is going from right to left, as well as up and down, sagittal, which is also up and down, but going anterior posterior, as well as axial, which is going from right to left and from anterior posterior. Let's begin our navigation of the EZ3D software by starting with the multi-planar reconstruction or MPR view. This particular view is separated into four separate panes, identified in the upper left hand corner such as coronal, axial, sagittal, as well as our 3D rendering. Immediately beneath that we have our patient ID number and typically our patient's name, gender, age, as well as the date of our scan. In the upper right hand corner we have our MPR view identifying the grayscale view in this window as well as the thickness of anatomy reviewing it in each one of these windows as well. We also have our anatomical markers in this case here right and left as well as our patient orientation in this case here identifying an anterior posterior aspect. In the bottom left hand corner we then have our radiation dosage as it relates to the exposure for this particular scan. The other panes such as axial and sagittal have a similar layout. Patient information, anatomical markers, patient orientation in the bottom right hand corner, dosage for that particular scan, thickness adjustment, and same thing for our sagittal. Patient information, radiation dosage, patient orientation, anatomical markers, and our thickness. Lastly, in the bottom right hand corner we have our 3D rendering with snap orientations such as head, F for foot, A for anterior posterior, P for posterior anterior, L for left, and R for right. To successfully navigate through the easy 3D software it's essential to understand how these anatomical views are being created. To help us identify where we are in the anatomy, we're going to use the 3D rendering in the bottom right hand corner. Starting with our coronal view, with a label being yellow, identifies the axis lines that are creating the view in this particular window. In this case here, this coronal line here, as well as this coronal line over here, are generating the view in my coronal window. To see that, I'll rotate my image around and you'll see that this line going from superior to the inferior border of my scan is this line from here down to there. The line going from right to left is then this line going from right to left. This is what then creating our view in our coronal window. Moving on to our axial view being green identifies this axis line and this axis line as creating the view in our axial window. Where this axis line is going from right to left is where we see the line going from right to left. And the line going anterior posterior is the line going from here anterior posterior. Lastly in our sagittal view being orange this axis line as well as this axis line are creating the view then in this window here. As identified by this line here going superior inferior is this line here going superior down to inferior border of our scan and this line here going anterior posterior is this line here going from anterior posterior. In order to modify or navigate through these grayscale views, we'll start with our coronal view. 
Simply hover the mouse on top of the yellow line which identifies my coronal view and note the large arrow projecting towards the coronal line. This is identifying the aspect of our view as it relates to this coronal window, as identified by the patient orientation in an anterior-posterior aspect. By positioning the mouse on top of the line, the arrow changes from a triangle shape to a black arrow going in opposite directions. Simply left click and drag the mouse, in this case here going to the anterior region of the arch, or left clicking and dragging the mouse to the right going back towards the throat. Let's do the same thing now with our axial view. We'll identify the green line here or here to define our view and navigate either superior or inferior. By left clicking on the green line, dragging it up into the sinus cavity towards the superior border of our field of view, or left clicking on this one here as well and dragging it down towards the occlusion and then eventually getting down into the mandible. In order to navigate through our sagittal view, simply identify the orange lines as indicated by our orange label as this one here in our coronal view or this one here in our axial view. Again, simply left click the mouse and in this case here drag towards the left hand side of our anatomy as indicated by our anatomical marker or left click up here as well and drag toward the right hand side of our anatomy and then you'll note how our view is changing in real time here here as well as in our 3D rendering. Moving the mouse along any of these access lines will allow us to perform a number of different functions. For instance Positioning the mouse on the intersection of two axis lines will allow us to change multiple views simultaneously. In this case here, our axial and sagittal view. By positioning a mouse further away from the intersection, again where the arrow then points in opposite directions, will allow us to move this line up and down parallel to this orientation. Moving the mouse further along the line where it changes shape again, looking like an arrow going in opposite directions with two parallel lines, will allow us to change the thickness of that anatomical view. In this case here, our axial window in the bottom left-hand corner. Simply left-click your mouse and drag it away from the axis line to change the thickness of the anatomical view in our axial window. In this case here, it's at 10.9 millimeters of anatomy or the anatomy that fits between this top line here and this inferior line here. To change the thickness again, simply position the mouse here and drag it towards the center or left click on the thickness drop down, left click here and then choose the desired thickness. We also have the ability to adjust the angle of any of these axis lines as well as indicated by positioning the mouse near the end of the line where it changes into an arrow going in opposite directions. In this case here we're going to navigate to the lower left hand side of our anatomy by left clicking on the green line and bringing it down to identify the mandible on the lower left and what we want to do is be able to change the angle of this line so it matches the angle of our arch. Simply position the mouse near the end of the line, either here or here, where you see the arrow going in opposite directions, left click, and then continue rotating about 20 to 30 degrees, in this case here, basically running it parallel to the two cortical plates. I can position it parallel by left clicking on these two lines, sliding it two millimeters towards the buccal plate to generate my view in my sagittal window thereby essentially seeing more anatomy in this window here. I also identify the arrow that you see that appears as identifying the aspect of our view in that particular window itself. In this case here, we're looking at the left hand side of the patient's anatomy from the buccal side or perhaps looking chair side. I'm going to perform the same function where I want to view the right hand side of my arch so I'll position my mouse on the intersection of these two lines, left click, drag it over to the right hand side of my arch, and in this case here, I'm then going to rotate again 
until this runs parallel to the two cortical plates and stop here again. In this example here, you note that we are technically looking at the right hand side of my anatomy. However, without looking at the window here and most importantly, not looking at that large arrow could create a false interpretation of our anatomy and make it appear as if we're looking at the left hand side of the arch. This is why it's essential to understand what this large green arrow is identifying for us here. In this case here, we are looking at the right hand side of the anatomy, but we're looking at it from the lingual aspect. If you wish to view it from the buccal aspect instead, we simply need to rotate this 180 degrees, such as this. Now that I position my mouse on the sagittal view, and most importantly, the arrow is now pointing from the buccal side, I'm now generating my view as if I'm sitting chair side looking at my anatomy. At this point in time, what I would encourage you to do is pause this video and replicate the steps as far as identifying the layout of your NPR window, including the anatomical markers, identifying the patient information, the exposure settings, the patient direction as far as the anatomical view, as well as interpreting and navigating the coronal, sagittal, and axial views.